If it's important to you, we're talking about it. The Talk of the Town on 100.7 FM, WUTQ. 740 and uh, rain outside. Thanks to Jill Real for our forecast in person. Our meteorologist from KTV delivering that to us uh, in the flesh this morning. And she's here with us every Monday and Friday in the studio. And if uh, she sticks around, uh, Michelle Classic gave me a little uh, little taste of what we're going to have, if you want me to tell, tell you, an Autumn Ricky. That's what she's going to be mixing. Oh, it's, it's, our, it's our Hey Bartender segment. Sure is. Coming up next hour. We also have uh, food coming in from our friend at the Oneida County Public Market, Beth Irons. And we have live music in studio later on, too, with the Old Main. They'll be playing live for us in advance of their big show at the Rome campus of MV. Right now, time to bring in our next guest. It's Utica Common Council President Frank Miola. Frank, welcome to the show. Good morning, Dave. Good morning, guys. How are you? There's food and there's music. Yeah, and drinks. Who are you guys inviting? Everybody here? (laughs) No, you're you're, you're special. Is there there a good invitation coming? Stick around. (laughs) It's an open invitation. For sure, yeah, just hang with us. And uh, we were joking about uh, the Cubs pitcher uh, in the sports news there. Uh, He has a special T-shirt, and his nipple keeps popping out of it when when he pitches, and so he has to readjust it. It must be one of those shirts that he just can't get rid of. And we were talking this morning, all of us uh, admitting to pieces of clothing that we have that we should be throwing away, but we don't. Do you, do you have anything like that in your wardrobe? Yes, I do have pajamas that I'll never let go. <laughs> were they, are they special theme pajamas like Spider-Man or anything like that? <laughs> well, not that old. But. <laughs> cool. Uh, well, welcome to the show. And um, we got the battle going on here for a common council president we actually had yeah. um uh mike galimi in yesterday we'll share some comments from him and maybe you could comment on that but some big topics in and around utica with the downtown hospital coming in what are your thoughts on that the city is moving in the right direction mm-hmm. you can't you can't urban uh, when you have development you have those development projects offset any probability of property tax increase in the future so the more development the city has the less responsibilities the taxpayer has. Going along with the master plan, you feel? Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. And, and the, uh, the, the city is moving forward. And you have to give credit where credit's due. And a lot of times in the past, past mayors like Mayor Julian mm-hmm. and Mayor Rafaro, they made those properties tillable so we can have these kind of development. I'm sorry. That's so right. We can, so you can have these development projects moving forward. Mm-hmm. Without the uh, efforts of the prior administration, you know, I'll tell you what, Mayor Palmieri, best salesman the city's ever had. And he's selling, selling, selling. He put more renewal properties on the table, um, uh, more development projects because the city was ready, shovel ready, and moving forward. Right. Now, some opponents of the downtown hospital location say that, well, landmark buildings are going to get wiped out. Um, is it possible that we can have uh, some commerce like this come in and still preserve the history of the city at the same time? That's the feasible study. Once that's c- completed, we'll know um, what the, our road traffic infrastructure would, would qualify for infrastructure, um, the type of building that needs, the type of parking facility that we're going to need. Mm-hmm. Um, all those questions all those uh, questions need to be answered prior to the development, of course, of the project. And has there been concerns or talk maybe within the council of uh, the tax base? You know, um, we, we, we touched base on this uh, a few weeks ago that it was around 34%, I think, now that the hospital's buildings kind of take away from, from the tax base. Mm-hmm. Um, and I you know there's been an idea of a curb tax, uh, any thought to something like that? Um, the uh, it's called embellishment fees. That was done in Rochester mm-hmm. in nineteen. I think nineteen ninety six. It was started. Mm-hmm. Embellishment fee, embellishment fees is a road tax that just um, um, property ta- property owners, all property owners, have to pay to maintain the roads. Um, it's been working in Rochester. We are looking into it in the city of Utica, um, but we're also looking to another project. You see, through referendums, people have been changing the city of Utica. It's been started a long time ago. Um, and when you see something wrong in government, usually government doesn't want to change to correct it. So you have to go to the taxpayers. And that's when I started what they call a lot of referendums. If you look in the past, um, there was budgetary powers. There was uh, recall for elected officials. There was uh, the, late, the last one was paving, mm-hmm. minimum allocations of $2 million per year. Now, guess what? I made a mistake. It should have been the erosion rate. Mm-hmm. Because if we took the erosion rate plus 1% or 2%, our city streets would have been good. But it was probably godsend because if we had that kind of financial impact during the last two two or three city budgets, there would probably be more people terminated on that, you know, more, more people let go. But thank God it didn't happen at that time. Now the city, right now our finances are bouncing back. Mm-hmm. We're looking for in our next city budget the additional $1.5 million we need to paving to least hit what they call the erosion rate. Your streets, our city streets, they wear trucks, cars, break off, mother, mother nature. It erodes. So our best bet is to 
take that rate, apply to the budget funding that we need, and get those roads paved, get those roads removed. Does it look like we'll stand under that 2%? I know it's far off, but 2%. Uh, I'm crossing my fingers. Right mm-hmm. now, all the department heads did submit their budgets for next year, okay. and we're going over each one one at a time. Uh, cool. Unica Common Council President Frank Miola joining us on the Talk of the Town, 100.7 FM WUTQ. We've been asking folks about West Utica and the neighborhood known as Varick Street, or is it the Brewery District? I know Michelle Truitt has a survey out about that. Do you have a feeling as to what it should be called? Um, well, uh, if you guys read the paper this morning, you'll see the uh, Irish Center. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Finally, funding is coming to the table. Right. And finally, more development down at Varick Street. There was mm-hmm. a meeting yesterday morning, correct? Was yes, at yesterday? Urban Renewal. Okay. They, it, they need, of course, there was a delay in the project. Mm-hmm. We all know that. Yep. But the best part, but the best news that I saw this morning in the paper is this moving forward. They mm-hmm. have people. They're, they're, hopefully, there will be a, a building there. And, uh, again, Again, more people, more people together. And, and businesses, when you have a, um, an anchor business, it helps uh, build other businesses. Young entrepreneurs come in. Let's open, a, um, an, uh, uh, an, uh, I don't know, an exercise place. Let's open another sandwich place, mm-hmm. soup, soup and uh, salads. Right. Whatever you do, when more people are, are in one congested area, more businesses pop up. And it's the best thing for our city. So in your take, the Irish Cultural Center will come to fruition. I, I got my fingers crossed. And but guess what? They, they said last time, I, I do have faith in them this time, that they will not fail. And more parking There's, is needed for that area, too. Absolutely. Plus, Chief Brooks says they're going forward. Right. And I believe in Chief. <laughs> yeah, so he was on the show earlier this week, too. Any new timeline for the Irish Cultural Center? Is it? Uh, there has been. Um, I haven't heard anything about a timeline yet. Mm-hmm. And, and sticking with that, how about Hotel Utica? Thoughts on that? And uh, Albany developer, you know, and... and I think folks have a little cautious about that because we've we've heard of you know developers coming in before not coming to fruition. Albany developer not unnamed, unnamed developer unnamed at this point. At this yep. point. Mm-hmm. Uh, thoughts on that city not uh, having to take control of it. Well, of course, the city doesn't want to get into the hotel business. Mm-hmm. Um, we're into service business for people of the city of Utica. Um, there was an error that was made in the way back in the prior administration that uh, put their name on a loan. So that that loan made us liable for a half a million dollar payment per year on a CDBG money. Mm-hmm. And that's what that's what takes money from the people of the city. And that was loan money or tax money or just... the, we get a whole bunch of CDBG money right. every year. Mm-hmm. And a half a million dollars of that money mm-hmm. goes for the payment of the loan of that building. Correct. We should have never co signed. We should have just let the um developers take control of it. And if they faltered, it was their error. Has that ours. been remediated or is there a time frame in no, which No, we'll we are stop? responsible until the end of that payment. That's if we want to continue receiving the C D B G funds, <laughs> we have to be responsible for our, you know, past errors. You know, way back in government uh, it was around the Hannah's time. Uh, a lot of projects ongoing in the area around the odd. Of course, the uh, outside of the odd looking great. Can't wait to see that uh, fantastic light show that's going to occur as they unveil that project. And then Harbor Point over there, maybe a baseball stadium coming, uh, the apartment complex, the fields over there, uh, the hospital, and the idea that Ed Bashero has been promoting about a, <laughs> about a gondola in that area. What do, you, what do you think about that? Well, we have some priorities first. I mean, I mean that's, that's like icing on top. You know, it's like the cherry on top of the cake. If we get there, I would love it. Love to see it. Yeah. Um, but let's talk about that development project, about that multi-unit, multi 125 units, I mm-hmm. think it was. Mm-hmm. Now, of course, everybody knows that there used to be um, tons of apartments there prior. Mm-hmm. The prior administration, um, the Refaro administration tore it down tore it and down. got it shovel ready. I mean, the people of the city of Utica, there's a team effort going on. It started from the past. These past mayors got it started. And I'll tell you what, you have the best salesman there sitting at the, behind that uh, desk right now. He's selling the city. And He's, speaking of which, you're, you're common council president. You're also the uh, the city democratic chair. Yes. And uh, is this is this your last term? Would you be termed out if you won? Yes. This? After this, uh, if I if I'm fortunate enough to win uh, another election, I'll be termed and, out. And and you did prevail in the in the primary over. Yes. Dan. Yes. Uh, There's three elections in a row. I ran th- it's three years in a row. I've been r- running, so it's a mm-hmm. little, it's a little, uh, you know, that's tough. And in the past, <laughs> and in the past, folks may have cited some personal issues personal issues regarding. You know your position in, in government. What would you say to those folks? Well, um, look at my uh, scorecard. See what you voted on and supported at the at the questions on the ballot. See, government doesn't want to change. The only things that change government are the people of the city of Utica. Mm-hmm. See, budgetary powers, major issue that I found. There was the um, back then the mayor only had the powers of the purse and all the finances. Now the council has equal powers, checks and balances. Sometimes you have. Bad councils. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you have bad mayors, and this and these years, this year past, we got great people on both the mayor 
and the council level. And that's why your city is pushing this, moving forward in this rate. I mean, you don't see this too often upstate. Uh, the hospital, you have to equate to $300 million in tax dollars are coming in. That's not counting the private investing. Another 200 to 300 million. That's a half a million, half a billion dollars going downtown. New infrastructure, new roads. I mean, you, how can you see notice a, a project like that? Sure. Uh, we had Michael Galimi on yesterday. If you grab the headphones there, we'll play a clip from him. We were talking about, uh, well, the kind of thing we hit, hit on when we started the conversation about uh, building downtown but also preserving downtown at the same time. He had some interesting comments. Check it out. It's, it's never n nice to see things that people want to keep torn down, okay, but at the same time it was private property. Um, now, I, uh, my wife and I went to uh, college in Rochester. Okay, She went to college in Pittsburgh. And Pittsburgh has a really beautiful main drag. Okay, it's all brick. It's very nice. Okay, but what, what you see, though, is all these new businesses in Pittsburgh. But it looks like old Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. So I think the proper way to go about that is, yes, should we consider things when they're torn down? Okay, but we cannot tell private entities that they can't do what they want with their property. So what I'd like to see is really strong uh, architectural, you know, cues go into the coding for those areas so that, okay, if the Ivy Cottage gets torn down, that's one thing. But whatever goes up in its place should now represent that original architecture. And, and I think if we move forward with that type of mentality, we uh, will maintain the look and feel that we all love in Utica but will also not impede progress. Michael Galimi, your opponent for the Utica Common Council seat. Frank, uh, agree, disagree, and... Um, nope, he's right on point, mm -hmm. and basically it's the job of the scenic and historic society. That's their job, mm -hmm. to make sure that the property that is replaced there has some kind of um, um, similarity to what the structure that was uh, removed. Mm -hmm. I, have so, a, I have a question regarding the, you know, the property, the Ivy Cottage property. Um, after you know, we brought up the topic, media uh, have brought up the topic, social media... Um, I, I heard just through the grapevine, and you can confirm this, the Common Council looked into the idea of maybe having the scenic and, and uh, preservation uh, uh, folks come to you uh, as the council to go over uh, some of the issues before the decision is made? Or? Um, that, uh, the, just get a little closer to the mic. There. I'm sorry. sorry. There was a public hearing mm -hmm. that was implemented. The council requ request. We have no um, um, so legislation powers to oversee okay. them. Well, we requested them to have a public hearing for the neighbors in the area to inform them of what is going on. And so this is going forward? This going forward, yes, because if the people uh, have knowledge of it, they'll feel, at least if they can understand the project and s understand the decision that the Scenic and Historic made, it, it uh, softens the impact of any type of uh, media misunderstanding. Instead of waking up in the morning and seeing the, the house building on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, so coming to the end of your term limits here, one way or the other, uh, what's in your future? Uh, what, what do well, you got planned? We plan? have another referendum coming to the table, hopefully mm -hmm. next year. Mm -hmm. um, of course, it uh, will be correcting my error that I made in the past for the paving. Mm -hmm. um, our funding is coming um, back, thank God. Uh, Standards and Poor's moved us up. Mm -hmm. um, uh, our controller is saying things are moving great. Um, basically, um, see, if you add more paving, it costs more money. Mm -hmm. If I can't get it out of city budget, it has to go come out of the taxpaying dollars. Right. And that's what I, I really I can't. I don't want mm -hmm. one point five million dollars is an extra six percent tax increase, and I'm fighting against that. We need more paving, but um, it's not coming from tax dollars. I'm working very hard to get it out of our next year's budget. And also, Frank, I meant too personally. What's what's ahead for you? Because you will reach the end of your term limit there, one way or the other. What what do you what do you have planned? What do you see for the future? Just a few years down the road. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. All right. Know. Very good. Uh, thanks for joining us today. Appreciate no, it. Pleasure, Thank gentlemen. You. Very nice. Thank you very much. And the studio looks wonderful. Isn't Penrose, great? Wonderful job. I mean, the colors, everything. I don't know why. People wouldn't, wouldn't want to just come here and just, like you said, there's going to be a nice party here, so yeah, I'm hey, going to be invited. All right, all right, Frank. we got security at the door. All right. <laughs> all right. It's the Talk of the Town 100.7 FM WUTQ.